Now, my next guest is the co-founder of Dragon Drive Addiction. He is also the co-owner of Narcoleptic Customs in Northwest Arkansas. He is also also the host of the Dragon Drive Addiction podcast and YouTube channel. Mike Narks, welcome to Automotive ADHD. Man, I am so excited to be here. I've listened to, I don't know, tens of hundreds of hours of your voice. So it's cool to always meet somebody that you spent so much time with. Well, and you know what they say, right? You, you never know what the voice looks like behind the microphone, and then you get a good look, and you're like, oh, man, no, voice for radio. <laughs> stay, stay behind the microphone. <laughs> oh, man, but you do a lot of stuff, and I think some of my listeners may already know some of your work as well. And uh, before we talk about all the incredible things that you do uh, with Drag and Drive Addiction and all these events and stuff you do as well as the YouTube channel and the podcast, give me a little bit of your background first. Oh, my goodness. So starting from a very young age, my mother would allow my brother and I to pick up a Hot Wheels car, single mom. We'd run into Walmart to grab some groceries. She'd say, OK, you can get a Hot Wheels. And that's really what started it. We are still Hot Wheels people to this day. We're not Matchbox folks. We are Hot Wheels and are always looking at it. Actually, behind my green screen, there's probably 300 Hot Wheels that we use as a base behind that for some of the shows. And then I have about half of my wall in the shop is covered with Hot Wheels as well. I love it. I love it. See, I'm one of those guys who uh, whenever I go to Walmart, wherever, mm -hmm. uh, I always I beeline into the toy aisle. And yep. people are like, what, what are you doing? And I'm beelining in there and I'm looking for cars that I usually own, but in the form of Hot Wheels. I do that. I do that. That's right. That's right. We are uh, we're truck people typically is what we like to purchase in Hot Wheels and then also build uh, within the shop and things like that. So, yeah. So not only do we like cars that are very small, we like cars that are very big, too. So we we build all kinds of stuff. Um, we have. I have a truck that I've had for 25 years that my grandfather had for 25 years before that that now has a 500 horsepower turbo LS overdrive trans. That's uh, a 66 C10 truck that we call Stanley named after him. Um, so that's always fun. And then we have a 70 MG midget that is about 450 horsepower, 2100 in a midget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 2100 okay. pounds, full tube chassis car, uh, really built for everything. And my brother hand built that car and we call it project Adam ant. <laughs> I love it. Got some creative project names yeah, there. And, yep. you know, I, I got some that is like, that one's broken. That one's more broken. But clearly yours are a little more creative, creative than mine. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. right. So, yeah, we have a ton of fun with this stuff. And then the last car we built is a uh, what we call the Narcs cart with a K. And it is a grand marquee that I purchased from an 85 year old man, drove it home and we completely tore it apart and built a jungle gym race car cage on it. And drive that thing everywhere. We put 10,000 miles on it last year, uh, competing in events and doing burnouts. And it has a turbo and nitrous and all this kind of stuff. It, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. I, I love it. And that that kind of that brings me into sort of my my first topic here, which is drag and drive. Obviously, you're, you're yeah. doing some of these events with some of these vehicles and these things like that. Tell me a little bit um, about the drag and drive concept. And we'll kind of tie that into your brand with drag and drive. But just, just give me a little bit of insight. What is drag and drive? Yes, certainly. So a long time ago, back before you or I were born, you would load up your car. And if you people didn't have trucks and trailers to go to the racetrack, so they drove their car to the racetrack. Well, and then the movie came out called Two Lane Blacktop. And those guys basically crossed the country racing earning money as they went, racing every day, all that kind of stuff. So David Freiberger took this, took that plan and the one lap of America where you competed every day in your race car and essentially picked four tracks and for five days, you and your co-pilot live and are fully supported in your race car. So as you race that day, you pull in, unload your truck and trailer, get the race car ready, and then you park the truck and trailer for an entire week. So you are truly self-sufficient. You're bringing your fuel, your tools, your race tires, and all that with you in a small trailer, or heaven forbid you load all that stuff in the car, what we call yard selling, which doesn't okay. make any sense to me because <laughs> it's very, very difficult. It's like going on vacation and packing and unpacking every day. It doesn't make any sense, but I love it. Love the people that yard sell. And then you make your passes. You drive to the next track. You make your passes there. You submit your best time slip to the registration booth. And then at the end of the week, they take your 
depending on the day count of the event, your five-day average, and that determines the standings within the event. So that's where this separates. Something that's typically an NHRA or IHRA event is because you're using your average across the entire event to win your class or you know set new records, which is all the stuff that we track on dragondrive.com. Right, right. Now tell me a little bit too about, so you're, you're basically, you're driving your car to each event and you're doing it sometimes pretty great distances between okay. events. What, what are some of the extra challenges that adds when you're building a race car? Typically you're building it just to go racing, but all of these race cars have to be street cars too. How does that mm -hmm. work? Yeah. So one thing that a lot of people forget is a horn and blinkers. You would be surprised because a lot of times <laughs> these guys are rewiring these cars, putting in bigger, you know, fuel pump capacity uh, wiring. They're putting in bigger fan capacity or you know, relays and things like that. And so blinkers kind of go to the wayside and horns go to the wayside because you're trying to figure out how can I keep a car that is fast, you know, eight second car, seven, eight second cars are pretty normal nowadays. So I need to keep that car cool and it needs to idle in traffic where there's a lot of cars. You can go to the racetrack where you're at this weekend and see cars that won't even be able to idle through the pits to get up to the uh, staging lanes to then make a pass. These guys are living in, you know, McDonald's drive throughs They're going into Dallas, Texas rush hour traffic in the mornings. You know, it's it's been pretty intense watching the growth of this sport. You know, in 2013, we had one event, which was Hot Rod Drag Week. 2015, we had two. And then for 2023, we're looking at 30 events across the world. 30 so events. It's It wow. has been, the explosion has been intense. And I think everybody being at home allowed them to finish their cars. Now they want to experience that. They want to go out. They want to drive that car. They want to have that life experience of typically you and your friend, not necessarily your spouse, which I can sometimes say that's not a good idea to bring your spouse or girlfriend <laughs> or boyfriend if they're not into race cars like this, because you're literally living the two lane blacktop life. You're driving 300 miles a day. Can you imagine putting 300 miles a day in a car that you just built? It's just finished. You've got 20 miles on it. Now you've got to drive it and you're going to be three or four or five, 600 miles away from your truck and trailer. And you're making your very best pass every chance you can. It's not like you're trying to be easy on that car. You're trying to make your fastest pass ever so you can win your class. And right, you're and doing I it. And you're doing it for no money. There's very few of these <laughs> events that pay money. You know, it's a labor of love when you're doing it for no money whatsoever. Yeah. You're doing it anyway. You're sinking a lot of money into it, no less. Yeah. I'll say yeah. that. But, I mean, th just the concept to me is really cool because, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to build a car that's not only reliable enough to just do one pass. You have yeah. to be able to build a car that's reliable enough and perhaps comfortable enough to actually drive to each drag strip, each location. And that really, I think, is cool because that flips this whole paradigm of drag racing on its head now. Because, I mean, drag racing started out a lot as kind of a grassroots thing. Mm -hmm. But over time, and we see this with drag racing, we see this with drifting, we see this with different forms of motorsports. Um, the longer these sports go on, the more professional they get, the higher end they get. You go from grassroots drag racing you know, with a car every your your car, you're driving to work, your nine to five car. But on the yep. weekend, you're racing it Two guys now who are doing engine swaps after every single pass they do. And that <laughs> that clearly I mean, I guess you could do that if you wanted to take the engine and the hoist with you in the car or on the. But typically, I don't think you see much of that happening at drag and drive, do you? No, you're, you're not going to see an engine swap unless it's absolutely mandatory and Hopefully you don't get to that point. There are multitudes of head gasket swaps. Um, you know, intakes are off all the time in the pits. Spark plugs. There's there's guys that do just regular maintenance that have had their car for many years and have worked out the bugs. And then there's guys that are literally finishing it in the tech line. Like most of you guys have seen, Mike Finnegan. He'll be working on cars, and at Hot Rod Drag Week 2022, they were literally rewiring the taillights so they would work with the trailer they were pulling with Blasphemy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's all over the place. It's awesome. I love it. That's fantastic. And, I mean, taking that love for it and building that into a brand as well and doing what you do now with Drag and Drive 
addiction. So you do the YouTube channel, you do the podcast, and you also have the website uh, as well. And so, so tell me a little bit about drag and drive addiction. What is it that you do? Yeah. So essentially I'm a little bit nerdy when it comes to that kind of stuff. So NHRA is a great example, and that's kind of where we are looking towards this, is the long-term effects of having all of this historical data. So dragondrive.com and Dragon Drive Addiction has all, I have compiled all of the historical data from every drag and drive event that has ever occurred since 2005. Wow. We, we then take that and build lists, you know, top 50, top 100 within different classes, within different event styles, or I'm sorry, not event styles, but different events like Hot Rod Drag Week. The Gebhardt family was gracious enough to provide us with Billy Gebhardt, his entire historical data, which helped so much and loved the family for doing that. They are a huge Dragon Drive family. And then we have Rocky Mountain Race Week as an entire event historical data. Uh, there's, There's all of these events that are happening that the hard part is for a person that is maybe just getting in and wants to know what the fastest naturally aspirated car is to have ever competed in that event. There was nowhere to get that data. And so we're slowly becoming that location for people to get that. And so we always are, are adding new lists or, you know, coming up with different ways that this information is relevant to racers that are coming into the sport and racers that have been here for a while to see where they stack up within their competition. Okay. Mike Narks, my guest, drag-n-drive.com is the website. You can check this out. Um, I'm looking at the website right now, and I mean, just on the front page, you've got lists, yep. you've got times, you've got all this different stuff. I'm seeing number one here, just, just bouncing this off of you here. Yep. Number one, Michael Westberg. 91 Chevy S10, a 6.4 average, 6.4 seconds average. That is mind-blowing. And it's in a square body S10, and it was done in 2023. So the list you're looking at is the top 100 quarter-mile national-level event drag and drive racers of 2023 so far. Wow. Now, as the year progresses and more national level events come on board that are a quarter mile, we will obviously change that. And so as we move into, you know, we are just starting May now. Our next big event is in early June. And then we're right back to back with another national event in the end of June. And then the Summit Racing Midwest Drags the second week of July. So stacked on top of each other for that five-week period, that list can completely change. So what it says now will not be what it says July 15th, which (laughs) to me is so awesome because these racers have never seen data like this, and they've never done something to chase that kind of, hey, I want to be the top racer of the year. And so we have 2022 stats that are cover a gamut of lists, and then 2021 stats as well. But one list that I'm very proud of that is growing every year is the I Survived a Dragon Drive Okay. list. So 2021, that list had about 800 and something people on it. 2022, there was almost 1,570 people on it. I look forward to seeing 2023's somewhere above 3,000 people. And what that will allow us to do is to start bringing, and that's not unique people, but that's every racer, every time they finish an event, their name goes on that list. Wow, can, that, is, that is incredible. 3,000 is your, yes. your estimate. I would say maybe more. And what's great is that that allows racers to then take their placement on that list and then they can go show their friends. They can show potential sponsors. They can show what they've done and that will live on forever. We'll be looking at that in 2030 and they'll be going back 10, you know, 12 years. And so I'm going to continue to add those type of lists as the time allows. So that's fantastic. And that's what it's an amazing tool that you're giving people who want to compete in this you i mean competition requires you to know what time you got to beat i mean it's really a fundamental of that and giving guys this resource this tool to know all right i'm i've got this car i'm running this this is the time i need to beat that is i mean it gives you a goal it gives you a goal to hit and not only a goal to hit a goal to break and you know what i think (laughs) 
What I think is cool here is that you've got guys who, I mean, this is, I mean, grassroots racing also yeah. at its finest. I mean, we, you know, we're not talking multi-million dollar top fuel drag teams mm -hmm. going around. These are dudes who work nine to fives. They work on the car on the weekend and then they go to a drag and drive event. And that yeah. is the coolest thing. That is my favorite type of motorsports. Well, and the name that a lot of the top fuel racers will notice is Larry Dixon. And his name was on the Hot Rod Drag Week list a few different times. And he races a 10 second car. So he comes out and just enjoys the week. He, he is a yard seller, as we call him. He loads everything up in the car and drives on to the next track and typically does the event solo because he's an animal. <laughs> I can't imagine loading because the other side of that, too, is a lot of these guys are used to cruise. You know, um, they come into a big event. They're racing their pro mod. They're racing their top fuel like Larry Dixon. And they have an entire crew to change the tires. Well, Larry doesn't. Larry pulls into the pits just like every other racer, pops the trunk, pulls his slicks out, rolls them around to the side of the car, jacks the car up, street tires off, race tires on, goes and makes passes. Comes back, does the complete changeover, and then goes on, drives his 250, 300 miles to the next track. Wow. That, that yeah. is so cool. I mean, really, that's just like, again, the coolest thing about this to me is just you got dudes like that. Show yeah. up, put the tires on, run, do the next thing. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. That is cool. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm sure you have some really incredible stories from the road as well. Let, let's talk a little bit about that because you can't have events like this oh, and man. not have mind-blowing stories. Do you have any good ones you can think of? So the one that comes to mind is the Canadian Chuck Norris, Mr. Rich Guido. Anybody that's going to dig into this will find his name right out of the gate. He runs a 1,500 horsepower stick shift Pontiac GTO uh, 69. He's going to kill me for not knowing 67 or 69. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he will log 7,000 miles driving that car and trailer to an event, then race in the event and drive it home. Now, if you live in Canada and you're driving to Florida, those kind of cars at that level aren't typically known to be super reliable, right? Well, he has driven this car for a long time, so he's worked a lot of those bugs out. But sometimes you have something like a transmission brake or a rear differential brake or you destroy your drive shaft. Well, sometimes that happens in the middle of an event and you have to change all of that to get back home. So Rich came down one to an event, uh, King of the Open Road, in November of 2022 and actually destroyed his transmission, destroyed the rear diff. and paired it and replaced them right there in the pits in Oklahoma City and fixed the car to drive home, even though his friend Trevor Brandon was standing there with an, an empty trailer and was like, I'll, I'll haul it back. I live 20 miles from you. He's like, nope, I'll fix it and drive it home. And he did. It was amazing. It's an amazing story. And that happens all the time. Um, another story that comes to mind is Red Hat Scotty and his dad, the dude, who is his co-pilot in every drag and drive event they've ever done. He races a car called the Rickety Rocket. They pull into Tulsa, Oklahoma. The motor lets go. They work till 4 a.m. swapping the entire long block. They had to do a cam swap in the parking lot, a valve spring swap in the parking lot. This car is a low 10-second car. Change everything on the engine put the new one in and drove and made it to the next track in time, barely, barely to make passes uh, at the next track and stay in competition. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. this is when you get the guys who are doing like motor swaps in auto zone parking lots, right? <laughs> oh, yes. This is, this yes. is where that happens. <laughs> Yes. When you see that, it's one of these drag and drive guys. I guarantee it. <laughs> yes, 100%. And one of the cool things, like for people that are outside that are going to come in, if you find, you can find the full list at our website. But if you see where one of these is going to come close to you, you've got to go check it out. Because what happens is anywhere from 100 to 300 racers, race cars, four or 500 racers and co-pilots are going to take over your town. They're going to be in the O'Reilly's or AutoZone parking lots. They're going to be at the restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's pretty amazing. The, the group of people are so, um, I don't know, inspiring, but also innovative when it comes to fixing something on the fly. I've seen people fix stuff from at Walmart. I've seen so many soda cans covering a turbo exhaust so they can just get down the road. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's too good. That's too yeah. good. This is this really has me hooked on this idea. And 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 we were talking about the other the other day before the interview. I was chatting with you on the phone, and you talked about there's all these events going on around the country. Here, for some of my listeners who listen to me on the radio locally here in Colorado, we have Rocky Mountain Race Week as well. And there's all these different events going on. What are some big key events um, that are happening? Because I'm sure no matter where my listeners are in the country here, there's probably an event going on nearby. What are some ones you can think of? Oh, certainly. So right in your backyard at Bandemir and Pueblo, look up Rocky Mountain Race Week. They have 1.0 and 2.0 that will be uh, right there at Bandemir and Pueblo uh, racing both of those. 1.0 is in June, uh, June 24th through 30th. And then 2.0 is September 28th through October 6th. And that's that's right there in there. Now, they cover about 1,300 miles in their race car. So they're kind of, they hit Nebraska and they hit Kansas and things like that. So it's not all the time there, but you can search there, RockyMountainRaceWeek.com. And then for folks that want to listen to my buttery voice anymore, they can go to MidwestDrags.com and find us at Virginia Motorsports Park, Atco, and Cecil on the East Coast. And that's July 10th through 14th. And then Sick Summer, which is a derivative of Sick Week. Sick Week happens in Florida in February. Sick Summer is early June um, around Cordova and Byron and one other track. I'm, I'm sadly not going to be at that event, but we'll be at Midwest Drags. And then as you move through the year, you have Hot Rod Drag Week, who is the OG, the grandfather of all of this. They are actually going to the southeast. So they're going to be Darlington and Bristol and kind of in that area in late September. OK, awesome. So really, no matter where you are in the country, yeah. you can find one of these events. You can go yep. be a spectator at one of these events yes, or certainly. if you've got a car. Well, you can go <laughs> race in one of these events, too. I mean, that's that's the fun part. While you've been yep. talking about this. I have a buddy who's working on, I mentioned him over the phone too when we were talking earlier. He's got a Volvo 240. Sometimes I play his car sounds intermixed with some of the listener car sounds on this show. Um, he's got, he's, he's twin supercharging an LS swapped Volvo 240. And so, uh, and, and also he's, he, it's, it might be a secret, so I'm not going to say his name, but uh, no, no, it's really cool. It's a cool build. I'm going to, I'm going to forward this to him, this show yes. to him as soon as we're, as soon as we're done. He needs to know about this because he's he's a guy who needs to kind of join the ranks of the Dragon Drive dudes. And I would love to get out there myself. I yep. just need to I just need to build a car that runs. That's that, that's a challenge. <laughs> hey, I'd say that's a challenge for everyone and everyone coming into this. It's always how much more. Oh, man, I could surely fit a cam swap in before that event. Oh, I can surely fit a better tune in before that event. And uh, and sometimes that doesn't happen. But I do want to call out two events that we will have new. So uh, new for 2023 is Redwood Rally, which is in Northern California and Southern Oregon, which is awesome. And then we also have Back to the Streets, which is around Detroit. And it is a weekend event and it is a no prep, heads up, eighth mile elimination style. So it's the first one that we're ever going to see that's that's like that. So actually eliminating and making losers race losers and winners race winners. It's, it's going to be pretty neat. That's Back to the Streets, Dragon Drive. I love it. That's fantastic. Again, the website is drag-n-drive.com. And uh, those are, don't, don't, don't spell out the dashes in there. They're actual dashes. <laughs> but but that, that's the website. You got to check this out. Um, before we wrap up here, you also told me before the show that you have an exciting news. So you've partnered with Summit Racing and you're doing a point series with them. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, this excites me more than I think just about anything we've done so far, essentially, because a lot of these racers will typically do one, maybe two events per year. There are some hardcore guys, like we mentioned earlier, Rich Guido, that will do three or four events, or Cameron Thorpe did four events last year. Dustin Cottle did five. He's He's the biggest animal I know. This point series is going to allow these multiple contenders, these guys that come out that finish these events, that place well it's going to allow them to win a drag and drive world champion title plus a big package we're putting together that we will be awarding at pri 2023 i'm so excited we are limiting racers to their top three finishes which means someone's not just going to go out and oh because i attended more i'm going to win it automatically they're going to have to come out and they're going to have to you know win their class they're going to have to come out and 
reset records, reset class records. We have points that are based around that. And then um, on the main page, you saw on the far right column, it says the Dragon Drive World Champion points. That is where people can track those as they go throughout the year. So I'm looking at looking at those right now, yeah. too. That is that is cool. And that ties into some of the, the statistics you're able to bring into that, that mm-hmm. that service you bring drivers with that as well. And that sounds like an incredible way to step up some of the competition as well in this really push guys to push their cars yep. to the limit. And again, I mean, it's different than a purpose built race car only. This has got to be a street car still. All of this yep. all said and done. These still have to be street cars. Well, and one thing that's really great about this format is that we are now seeing racers that would typically have only done one event like Doc McIntyre and Jeff McConnell in the C-Red Camaro. Those guys typically only do one event a year. They run mid-sevens. They are the fastest naturally aspirated drag and drive car out there. This is a top tier level. They come out one time a year. Now they're going to come out and attempt to win this title. How much more maintenance does that take? What What is the mm. new maintenance schedule within that car? We have a guest on tomorrow night named Aaron Schaefer, who is literally has, currently holds the closest record to the 850 class, 8500 class, that is in any of the Dragon Drives events in history. And he was typically a one event per year, maybe two. Now he's looking at doing three. So this isn't for the fastest of the fast. You know, a guy like that that runs 850s can come out and he can win this too. And I'm telling you, Aaron has a really, really good chance to do that. That's awesome. That is amazing. Uh, again, that website, drag-n-drive.com. You can also follow uh, on YouTube at Drag N Drive Addiction. Follow this. This is way too cool. And and Mike, I really love what you're doing with it. You're doing something fantastic. I think it's only going to grow even more. I mean, you were saying again, this upcoming year, 3,000 people, maybe more as well. I mean, this is really cool. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. I, I appreciate you letting me tell everybody and kind of bring some of my uh, enthusiasm and nerdiness over here to your audience as well. <laughs> I love it. And if I love it, I'm sure my listeners love it too. I mean, this is one of those things that's too cool. And I think you're definitely going to find me at some drag and drive uh, oh, events perfect. coming up here too. You've sold me on it completely. So I, <laughs> I may not have a car that's drag ready. A lot of my stuff is autocross and, and road course stuff, and it's usually broken too. So it doesn't doesn't help but but that being said i'm gonna go out for sure as a spectator i've got friends who would love they, they've got oh, cars yeah. for this and they would love to get into it so we're just spreading the word i really love it mike again i want to thank you for joining me right here on automotive adhd